understanding, used 160 times in 156 verses of the Bible, the intelligence and insight of both God and men. remembers us and brings healing and power when we remember his covenants with us. I'll explain that in a moment. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Rod Hendrick. And I'm Janice. You know, this is the Quick Study Television program and we are going through the Bible. So today we are in the book of Psalms. Now the book of Psalms is also 150 prayers. It is an amazing book. And we're going to be talking about this coming up in Psalm 103 to 106. And that is this. He remembers. Now remember, Hagar said he's the God who sees me. Later we know he's the God who hears me. But he's also the God who remembers his promises and his covenants when we call on them. We'll talk about that coming up. It's going to be a good day today in just a moment. Corey is here with Bible Archaeology and History. Today we are going to be exploring ancient Jerusalem and talking about some theological concepts. All right. Theological theology means the study of God. Theos is God and of course the uh, Ological or the ology, of course, means the study over the the uh, surmising up. Jan, later we're going to mm -hmm. do some special prayer. Yes, we are indeed. And you've been typing in prayer requests, mm -hmm. and we want people to call your friends and call the folks around you who might be struggling with cancer or some of these other things. We're going to come to prayer later on in the program. We're going to ask God for healing and for help and for strength to return. Mm -hmm. We also have an important thing uh, to tell you about what's happening on the website so that you can learn more. So stay there as Quick Study continues. Now as we study through the book of Psalms, I love to imagine the sound of the Psalms being sung um, at the temple, which of course was located when it was still around in the city of Jerusalem on uh, Mount Moriah or Mount Zion, the Temple Mount. Right now what you and I are going to explore is the actual city of Jerusalem itself, where these Psalms would have been sung routinely, not just every day, but at the specific feasts and festivals as well. Although the physical archaeological record of early Jerusalem is still relatively quiet, we are able to glean rich hints and information from historically contemporary sources, like the Amarna letters. These let us know that Jerusalem, called Jebus, was an important, royal, fortified city before the days of King David. 2 Samuel records how David and his army commander Joab enter this fortified city by sneaking in through a sort of water access shaft or tunnel. Until recently, archaeologists believed that they had found that very shaft in what they call the Warren's shaft. Now they are reassessing, but the conquering via water shaft is not in question. Archaeology has shown it probable and realistic. Exciting and controversial are the excavations still going on underneath and around the Temple Mount complex. Archaeologists working here are smack dab in the middle of King Solomon's original handiwork. Underground chambers, walkways, ritual baths for Israel's priests, and even possible connection passageways to the royal palace. 
An underground stable and holding pen for animals was found near the edge of the Temple Mount complex. Unfortunately, this has since been destroyed by vandals of history. It's time to explore the wise guys of the Bible, and they are all around us. Now, when the maid servant of Sarah, that is Abraham's wife, that's who Sarah was, was tossed out by her mistress, God encountered the Egyptian woman and saved her life. She is named, Abraham, God is named, the God who sees me by her. David, the sweet psalmist of Israel, taught us through his music that God is the God who hears us. In Psalm 105, we also learn that God is the God who remembers his covenants. Wise guys will read the Psalm and learn of God in Psalm 105 that he is a covenant God. And this is a contribution or a continuation also of Psalm 103. It is penned by the wise guy, David. And he teaches us that God remembers his covenant. Psalm 105, verses 1 through 12. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing psalms to him, talk of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name, let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength, seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works which he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O seed of Abraham his servant, you children of Jacob his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever, the word which he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant which he made with Abraham and his oath to Isaac and confirmed it to Jacob for a statute, to Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying, To you I will give the land of Canaan as the allotment of your inheritance. When they were few in number, indeed very few, and strangers in it. Psalm 105, verses 1 through 12. You're watching Quick Study Television. My name is Rod Hembry. Thank you for joining us today. Before we begin looking at the scripture, I wanted to remind you that on July 1st, we have called a day of prayer. Now we're opening the church here in Orangeville, Good Friends Fellowship all day, where we will be praying from nine to five Eastern time. And we're going to fast lunch that day as well. And we encourage you, ask your pastor to open up the church and ask your pastor uh, if he would allow you to pray. Or you can register with us and pray with us and just say, we're here praying with you in your own home. You can call us or write to us right away and we'll get you registered for that because I'm gonna send you an agenda uh, a prayer agenda, it's also going to be online. You can go online and you can actually click on I'll Pray July 1st. We are praying for the nation of the United States. We are praying for the nation of Canada. North America needs real prayer right now and we are going to dedicate ourselves to that on that specific day. Why not join us? I encourage you to do so. With that being said, let's go to God Remembers. Let's study today Psalm 103 to 106. going to focus on Psalm 105. With that in mind, we've read it, but let's review it. Here's what the Bible says. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Look at that. Number one, thanks. Number two, call on his name. Number three, make known God's deeds to the peoples. Number four, sing to him songs of praise to him. Number five, talk of his wondrous works. Number six, glory in his holy name. Number seven, let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Number eight, seek the Lord and his strength. Number nine, seek his face forevermore. Number 10, remember his marvelous works, which he has done. Uh, number 11, his, or rather, uh, his wonders and his judgments and his mouth. O seed of Abraham, his servant, you children of Jacob, you chosen ones. Here we have 
10 things to do to remind us of who God is, to remember who God is. And one of the things we learn about remembering who God is, is that he remembers his covenants with us. The last line here says, remember, O seed of Abraham, his servant, you children of Jacob, his chosen ones. God's covenants are forever. God speaks covenant language and they are forever. So our first study wise point is God remembers when we remember to call upon his covenants. God remembers when we remember to call upon his covenant. Now, if you want to speak the language of heaven, there's a lot of people arguing about, you know, what language they speak in heaven. Some say Hebrew, you know, some say, well, we're not really speaking a language. It's all telepathic. Others say, well, it's Korean because so many Koreans have prayed and that, you know, uh, there's these beautiful Koreans are amazing. I've never seen people pray like them. Some say, you know, it's Swahili uh, in Southern Sudan. Others say all kinds of different things, but the language of God is covenant, covenant. Do what you say, say what you do, live what you are, be and say what you are. That's the covenant language of God. God remembers when we remember his covenant and recite it back to him. Look at verse seven. It goes on to say, he is our Lord or he is the Lord, our God. In other words, he is Jehovah. Jehovah means provider, protector. He is Jehovah, our master, our God. His judgments are in all of the earth. He remembers his covenant forever. The word which he commanded for a thousand generations. Now, beloved, our study wise point is this. God remembers his covenants throughout all of time and space. He is eternal and he is always, everybody watching on TV, say it out loud, always. He is always faithful. His language is a covenant language. Now I've already said it, but I'm going to say it again. I'll probably say it a few more times before we're done with this because we need to understand that. Listen to me carefully. God does not have disposable relationships. God is not a conditional lover. God will discipline you. If you've come to Christ and you begin to walk away, let me tell you something. Your life is going to be a living hell because God is a discipliner because he loves those he disciplines and he disciplines those he loves. But God is not a conditional lover. I mean, once you've called on Jesus Christ as Lord, he's going to remember you did that. And, and he's going to remember that uh, to remind you that you did that. That's called the discipline of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because God's language is covenant. If God's covenants can be broken, what's the point of a God of Israel? And that's why the, Israel, the covenant with Israel remains intact. Now, Psalm 105 verses 9 to 12 say it this way. The covenant which he made with Abraham and his oath to Isaac and confirmed it to Jacob for a statute to Israel, an everlasting covenant, saying to you, I will give the land of Canaan, I'll give to you the land of Canaan as an allotment to your inheritance when they were few in number, indeed very few and strangers in it. Beloved, can I just say that the biblical mandate to encourage and stand with the nation of Israel is so important. Now, in today's world, uh, most of the nations surrounding Israel and, and many in the United Nations do not stand with Israel. They want to see Israel dissolved. Other nations want to see Israel wiped from the face of the map. Do you know that God is not interested in seeing any nation dissolved? God is not interested in wiping any nation from the map. As a matter of fact, Acts chapter 17 tells us, Paul the apostle, St. Paul tells us, he says when he's arguing with the Greek philosophers, he says, do you realize that every nation upon the earth, God has determined their times and their places, the very spaces and the property lines in which they live, how? In that men may grope for him and know him, for in him we live and we move and we have our being. God loves every nation in the world, and God doesn't want any of them dissolved. What he wants is he wants all people, he is not willing that any perish, he wants all people to know who he is, that his name, his Hebrew name, one of them is Sar Shalom, that is Prince of Peace. And so, beloved, as we recognize this, remember this, God remembers his covenant with Israel and their land. We would do well to remember it also. God remembers. He does not forget. Now, I'm not here to get in a political argument with anybody. That is not my expertise. It is not my corridor of power, and I wouldn't presume to tell anybody what to do. I pray for our leaders. I don't try not to criticize them. 
I pray for every single party in the nation of Canada, every single party in the nation of uh, United States. We pray every Sunday night. If you come to our church, we pray for all nations. But what I am here to tell you, God is not willing that any perish. And when people on the earth begin to want to dissolve and destroy other people, this is not God's way. It's not God's way. It just isn't. God is not willing that any perish. Beloved, it is time for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ to remove itself from all kinds of racism, to remove itself from all kinds of hate. God's church is not an organization of hate. It is an organization of redemption. And so may we learn that in today's world of hypermedia. We need to lead by example and examples of love. Right now, I want to do something uh, that I normally don't get an opportunity to do on Quick Study, and that is to talk about a theological idea, a concept that we find in the scripture. We're going to focus on the Old Testament usage of the word holy. What is it that we mean when we say God is holy? What does God mean when he says to Moses, you're standing on holy ground? Let's have this conversation now. The word holy is used almost innumerable times throughout the Old and New Testaments of the Bible. God is called the Holy One of Israel, the Holy God, the Holy Spirit. Jerusalem is called the Holy City. The temple is called the Holy Place. Within the temple, there is the most exclusive Holy of Holies, separated from the rest of the temple by a veil. God's people are called God's holy people, a holy nation. God calls people to be holy, God's actions are described as holy, and the scriptures are called holy. From the scriptures themselves, we learn that holiness comes from God and is uniquely bound to Him. The word itself means apartness, separation, otherness. The word holy distinctly categorizes a person, place, thing, or action as something different than is normal in our sin-filled world. But not just different, tied to the righteousness of the Creator, the God of everything. To call God holy is to recognize that He is altogether different from us while still being completely relatable. In a way, holiness is a great mystery. According to the Bible, the state of being made different, of being made holy, only happens with the presence of God. There are two instances that the presence of God is described as making the ground holy. Once with Moses in the burning bush in Exodus 3, when Moses is asked to take off his shoes to honor this fact. And again in Joshua 5.15, when God meets the leader of Israel. In our world today, there is a severe lack of holiness, that is to say, godliness, being both pure and different while still being relational. According to the scriptures, holiness is what believers are called to be. Just as God is holy, we are called to be holy. Just like the very normal ground in Exodus, to become holy, we need the continuous presence of God. Equidistant lettering, the Bible codes. This phenomenon does not occur in any other religious books or in any other ancient literature, not in Homer's Iliad or in the writings of Josephus. It doesn't occur in recent history, medieval writings, Shakespeare, or other poets. This mysterious code occurs only in the 66 books of the Bible. But what is the Bible code? And is it important to Bible believers? Is it a dangerous cult seduction, or is it authentic? Join Rod, Janice, and Corey Hembry in a special, never-released, one-hour DVD video about the Bible codes and what they really mean. We also need your help this summer and your support. We are supported by viewers just like you. We will send you the never-seen DVD Bible code with Rod, Janice, and Corey Hembry when you write or call. Our suggested donation is a gift of $20 or more. You can write to P.O. Box 150, Murraysville, Pennsylvania, 15668-0150. 
or in Canada and the rest of the world, P.O. Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, L9W5G2. You can also call for faster service at 724-733-8336 or 519-940-8338. This is the Quick Study Television program as we continue to go through the Bible in one year. I want Corey to briefly tell us about your course on Bible Discovery Seminary and then we're going to pray. Go ahead, Corey. Um, well, the course is basic uh, Bible history. It's an introduction to Bible history and Bible archaeology. So by the time you're finished the course, you will have covered uh, the main time periods that the Bible itself covers. And you will also be learning some key archaeological finds over the last couple centuries that really have highlighted and just articulated the Bible's accuracy when it comes to its recorded history. So if you'd like to find out more about a Bible Discovery Seminary, and we recommend this for people who teach Bible studies in their homes or they teach Sunday school or they teach in church or whatever. If you'd like to know more about it, go to our website at BibleDiscoveryTV.com and click on Bible Discovery Seminary. I feel very strongly about this and, and you struggled with getting Did You Know? And as we were taping the program, started taping the program, you mentioned it to me and it just resonated with my heart. Of course, Janice and I married over 31 years well, 31 years, actually over 31, you'd be 32 this year. That's right. And we minister as one. And so she actually said something and I agreed with her and there's power in that agreement because marriage is an alliance against evil with God at the center. And she was typing in some prayer requests. Tell us about it. Well, um, as I've explained on a couple of other programs as well, I get the prayer requests from the U.S. office and here from the Canadian office and from you viewers worldwide and we take your prayer requests very seriously because we believe in the power of prayer and especially when we agree together and we go to the Father with our needs. And um, what I have noticed in the last six months to a year really, 98% of the requests that we're getting are for people themselves, viewer themselves, that have cancer or somebody that are, that's very close to them in their family that have cancer as well. The other request is for family salvations. And that's, that's both, both great things. Now, yeah. now listen, listen to me. The Bible talks about, is anyone sick among you? Anoint mm -hmm. them with oil and with the elders of the church. The, there's two aspects of that. First, there's a spiritual aspect. The oil represents the Holy Spirit. Right. But secondly, there's a practical aspect to it. If you read the scripture, the Greek there, it actually means an, a, a, you, there should be a practical helping the person or an application. Our practical application here is this. We know a great, amazing person, Jennifer Clark, mm -hmm. and she has put together a company called Heaven Sent. Now, yes. she's from Aurora, Ontario. That Arthur. There's, or excuse me, Arthur, Ontario. So make sure you get the right one. We're going to put her website on our website. She creates products, you know, personal products like deodorants and things and, mm -hmm. and cleaning products that are non-toxic to the Absolutely body. Absolutely natural. No carcinogenics, none of Nothing. that, that create problems and can cause various kinds of diseases, including cancer. I want to sensitize you to that so you understand that you can get a hold of her from our website. She's not asking us to do this. We're not getting any commission. This is not an infomercial. I'm not even asking you to give an offering in order to pray for you. I know some people will want an offering from you to pray. I don't want an offering to pray. I mean, you know how we work here. We're supported by viewers who are called by the Holy Spirit. I want to pray for you because Jesus Christ wants to heal people today. And he already took stripes upon his back and That's paid right. the cost you for do your not, healing. It's been paid for. You mm -hmm. do not need to, you need to come under obedience of Christ and come to Christ and give yourself to him. And you, what you need to do is you need to pray. Join with us right now. And I want to pray for those struggling with leukemia, mm -hmm. with breast cancer struggling with, um, what was some of the We've other ones? Pancreatic cancer, pancreatic brain cancer, cancer. Brain cancer. Mm -hmm. We're going to pray for you. Bone cancer, skin bone cancer. cancer. We're gonna, look, we're going to pray for you right now. And I believe, because the Bible says it, that God, who is the author of our DNA and the author of this universe and the author of our lives, is going to heal. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I agree together with intercessors and with those who are watching on Quick Study right now, those right here in this studio, Lord, even as right now, as we're taping, there's a storm going on outside and the devil's trying to distract. Well, we rebuke the devil in Jesus' name. The Lord rebuke you, devil. Because there are people who have storms in their life. The cells have gone out of control and there's chaos. I pray, Father, in Jesus' name, by the power of the Holy Spirit, and you're doing it right now, Lord, thank you. By the power of the Holy Spirit, 
heal. Heal your people, Father. Those who are reaching out to you, reorder their lives for family salvation, for those who have spiritual uh, disorders and, and disorders of emotions. We pray, Lord, for healing. And I want to thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. It is Jesus Christ who has done this. Jesus has done this. Nobody else did it. Jesus Christ did it. Amen. Faithfulness. It is difficult for us to understand since we in the West have created the disposable society. We love new. New smelling cars, new products bound with hard plastic, new things, new lives. Often we toss our old relationships out for new ones. Tragically, marriage increasingly is becoming a disposable institution. We make arrangements for divorce before we get married. We call it prenuptial agreements. But God's wisdom is at work in us when we learn about the word restoration and covenant. God honors us when we honor our covenant. With that we pray, Lord teach me to speak the language of covenant with the actions in my life. Make me faithful. In our Wise Up segment, we are looking at the book of Proverbs. Our commitment remains to take you through Proverbs as well as the Bible. It's part of the Bible, but wanted to handle it verse by verse this year. 28 says, a perverse man shows stri sows strife, and a whisper separates the best of friends. Boy, is that not true? Have you not had people in your life who you think you're friends and, and you confide in them? And the next thing you know, they're telling that story to someone else and just totally destroying your confidence. This happens a lot, especially on the social networks. But you know, Jesus Christ said he can teach discipline. He can give us the strength to overcome. He gives us the fruit of God's spirit, which is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, kindness, and faith. But you can only gain those kinds of resources if you come to Christ. That's what the Bible says. I believe what the Bible says. So today I wanna to introduce you to Jesus Christ who has power over all that hurt and has power to give you the discipline necessary to control yourself. Just come to him and say, Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior to give me eternal life and the power and the strength to live. Help me, Jesus. Pray it, be serious, he'll answer. Hi, Rod Hembrew here. One more thing just before we go. Remember, we need your help in the month of May and the month of June. If you can support us, pray about it. That's what God would have you do. It would help us tremendously.